Hello, welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen and today I'm going to be making a beach inspired landscape soap. At least that's the plan in my mind. <laughs> uh, for the fragrance today I'm going to be using, it's called Water Orchid from Wholesale Supplies Plus and this smells really nice. It is it does have some floral overtones, but it's very soft, a little bit of fruit in there. I just think it's wonderful. And uh, I wanted to do a beachy landscape because I have these. I had some extra batter and I poured some little sunshine molds, these little column molds that I got these from. I think I got these on Amazon. I will leave a link down below if I can find it. <laughs> um, they unmold really easy. So anyway, I've got my little sunshines made and I wanted to use it and I was thinking of the beach. It's been a long winter and I'm thinking of the beach and the ocean. <laughs> so for the sand portion of my beach that I'm going to do, I will color it with uh, sage. Sage powder makes a beautiful sandy color um, and it barely has any exfoliation. It, it You know, just a teeny little bit, but it looks to me, it looks really sandy. So that is gonna be the sand portion. I'm still trying to pick out my ocean and my sky colors. So as I do, I will show you when we get into this soap. This is gonna be an aloe vera soap today. And I think that's it. I will show you the colors as I get in here and decide more on them. I'm still formulating how I'm gonna do this uh, with the water and the sky and my sunshines. But I got the fragrance, got the embeds made. It'll come to me. <laughs> You're coming along with me. So let's get everything pulled together, get my hair pulled back, and we will make some ocean-inspired landscape soap. And if you've been enjoying the videos, please consider hitting the like button and subscribe and the bell for notifications. All right, I have got all the prep work done and I've picked my colors and I'm ready to move forward. So let me tell you what's going on. Um, I got all of my oils with the additives, which is kale and clay and colloidal oats and the fragrance in one big batch and I split it into three different batches. So this is one third of my oils. Did the same with the aloe vera lye solution. I, it's got the sugar, the tussa silk, the sodium lactate, split it into three. Because I wanna handle this layer by layer, um, this fragrance does have some floral notes to it. Florals can speed and accelerate. A couple of reviewers said they had some acceleration, others said they didn't. So. I just wanted to do this in bite-sized pieces so I'm not panicking as I get through. I wanted a sand layer, an ocean layer, and a sky layer. So for the sand layer, I am gonna use the sage powder, and I'm also gonna do like a little frothy on top um, with some French white shimmer mica from Wholesale Supplies Plus and amp that up with a little titanium dioxide. Um, because this fragrance does say that it discolors to a light yellow. So I just want the sand with a little frothy. You know how the waves come in and make that froth. So that's layer number one. Layer number two is my ocean. And here is some pictures that I pulled up for color inspiration. colors that I chose for my ocean. I wanted to do more of a tealy green blue, so I'm going to be using Aqua Pearl Mica from Brambleberry. Hello beautiful, isn't that lovely? Uh, and Proud Peacock, which I love this one from Nurture Soap. So it, this is also a little aqua-y, aqua aqua-ish, but it's more blue definitely. And then also I'm going to use this Sea Green from Nurture. So these three, I'm hoping if this fragrance is behaving, if not, on this first layer, if it's like a nightmare, I'll just pull one of these colors. But I'd like to do just a very wispy in the pot swirl with these to sort of represent that, you know, just aqua range. And I might do a, a little bit of titanium dioxide in there too to make like little capped waves. I don't know. We're gonna see how this is behaving before I make too many promises. But if that's behaving, that would be the ultimate plan. And for the sky portion, of course, I've got my little sunshine embeds here, which are so pretty and bright and yellow. Um, and these were colored with, um, oh, what is it? Love and Sunshine from Nurture Soap. That's what yellow that is. Okay, for the sky, the colors that I want to do with a, I'll use a titanium dioxide. This is a water-soluble TD that I have pre-mixed here in my little bottle. So I'm going to do uh, some, uh, pull off some TD portion for white fluffy clouds. And then I want to do baby blue, which is kind of a, it's not really a baby blue. I think it's more of a grayish blue, but I love it. It's beautiful. Um, and along with, oh, sorry, azure blue mica, which I thought these two, 
if I can do an in the pot swirl with the titanium dioxide, are more blue than the ocean. So I'm hoping that it will have a definitive like aqua blue to sky blue. So that is, <laughs> that's the plan. It's a little ambitious, we will see. So all of that being said, uh, I'm gonna get my safety gear on here and I will be hand stirring to emulsion and I'm not gonna pull my stick blender out until I'm confident that this uh, fragrance isn't gonna go wonky doodle on me. <laughs> we don't wanna get buggered over here. So um, let me get my safety gear on and we will move forward with the first layer of this beach inspired soap. Okay. We're ready to go. So here is my aloe vera lye solution. One third of it. We'll just get that poured in. Hand stir to emulsion. I'll tell you, this fragrance, um, I am not a huge floral fan. Um, and it definitely does have a floral note to it, but it's very pleasant. I think it, it just, it smells very, um, like you're out in a garden sort of a smell. It's, it's not offensive to me at all. And it doesn't, you know, smell, cloying or grandma-ish. I'm a grandma, so <laughs> don't be offended. I'm a grandma too. But you know how sometimes scents can be, you know, not youthful. This smells kind of youthful. It's very nice. Um, so all that being said, I think we've got emulsion. It kind of came together pretty quick here, but it's behaving. It looks all right. So I have my TD and my shimmer white mica off here from a little frothy and I'm just gonna let that set off to the side while I get my sage powder blended in. Because I'd like to just sort of do that on top. So, let me pull my spatula out and I'm going to use my whisk to blend in my sage powder. Let's do one, there we go. That'll be good. Uh, these pictures that I'm working with today are from Websterant, Websterant, where I got my um, my soap curing racks. I did a video on that a while ago. I built soap curing racks, and um, that's where these pictures are from. The handles are a little bit wide for me, but I like them because they're see-through and they have the measuring on the side. So when I split the batch, it was really nice to have measurements on the side to kind of help me along. All right. We are hanging in there, so without getting too excited, I am gonna go ahead and stick blend because I want that titanium dioxide to get blended. And so I'm just gonna really quick give this a pulse and then we'll get to pouring. I'm ready to do the next layer here and I'm very happy to announce that that did not accelerate so that is a wonderful blessing <laughs> I'll take it um, I am soaping at cool temperatures I'm about 80 degrees my basement is very cold so yeah this is uh, this fragrance does and I've had this before where it starts to thicken pretty quick and you're like oh yeah it's gonna go and then it just kind of stays there and it loosens up again um, very strange but nice <laughs> so now we are on to the ocean portion of the soap got emulsion and I'm gonna split off for my colors I'm still not gonna play around with this too much just because I'm nervous but so far so good
All right, it's the next day and I'm very excited to get in here and see how this came out. I did come down early this morning in the studio and steam the top of this soap. Um, and that's just with a clothing steamer. Uh, it shoots out literally just steamed water and it shines up the top. It didn't have soda ash, but it was dull. And I had originally planned on doing like an, a wavy kind of scoop top, but this looked so pretty, I just left it. Sometimes I overwork my tops and I didn't want to do that. So I just let a good thing go and I thought that looks beautiful. I was really happy with the colors. Cannot wait to get in here. Um, this smells really good today. <clears throat> it did not accelerate at all. In fact, it went very slow. I had to wait in between each layer. So um, that is a good report. So I'm ready to get my end slice off here. Um, because it took a while to firm up, my lines were flat. I had intended to do like spoon texturing and it was just taking forever. So I went ahead and poured, but oh wow, that's cool. I'm loving the colors. I wish that wasn't quite so straight. That's why I put the mica line down. Um, because I wanted the ocean and the sky to have a definitive break there and not blend into each other. But this is pretty cool. I have been landscape challenged in my soaping experience. So I think this is really pretty. I wish that uh, I had gotten some waves on my ocean, but the colors are so bright. These are really happy bars. Doesn't that make you smile? I mean, I think that would brighten anybody's day. And I will say this fragrance is very strong. Um, I used the max usage rate for the volume of soap that I made, and you could even go lighter than max. I might, if I do it again, the water orchid, I'd probably do the medium to the lighter usage rate because this has a nice, strong scent. I mean, if you like this scent, then these bars are gonna rock your world because <laughs> it's strong, but it smells great. But it's not a, um, it's not like a rose garden floral. It's more like wild floral, and it does have some kind of watery, sunny notes to it. So I think it's really pretty, and these are happy. I think it'll bring a smile to bath time or shower time, right? So the colors are what tickle me. And the, ba the bottom here, uh, it's got a little bit of a rim, so I think this is going to discolor a little bit. I'm hoping the water foam doesn't discolor too much, but that is just sage powder. Isn't that the most perfect sand color? Just simply sage powder. I think it just makes the perfect sand. So I'm pretty much loving everything about these, except I wish that I had gotten some little caps on my ocean water. But other than that, these are just making me super happy. All right, I'll talk you through my cleaning up and beveling uh, process here. This is a KitchenAid vegetable peeler, and I love this thing. It's just kind of sturdy in my hand, and it makes a nice, very clean edge on my bars. This is about more than 24 hours, about 26 hours after I molded this yesterday. So I unmold it at about 18 to 24 hours, let it sit for a couple hours to let the surface area dry, but look how nice and even those edges come out. So that's what I do the same day that I unmold and now I'm gonna stamp. So I just choose a side that I wanna stamp. Got my trusty stamp here. There's a link down below where I got it. Um, spritz it with isopropyl alcohol so that it releases really easily from the soap batter or from the soap bar. And I just tap, kind of 
make sure it's all even, rock it out, and there is a nice crisp stamp. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And uh, I hope you have a wonderful day, maybe a day at the beach. <laughs>